Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 166 and 167. Problem number 166, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says, yesterday I walked five kilometers. I walk part of the time at 2 kilometers per hour, 2 kilometers per hour, kph, kilometers per hour, and I ran the rest of the time at 3 kilometers per hour. They go on to tell us, they go on to tell us that had I run, or rather I go on to tell you that had I run the distance I walked and walked the distance I ran, the journey would have taken 10 more minutes. Question simply is, how long did I run? One more time. Yesterday I walked for 5 kilometers, I walked part of the time at 2 kilometers per hour, and I ran the rest of the time at 3 kilometers per hour. Had I run the distance I walked, and walked the distance that I ran, the journey would have taken 10 more minutes. The journey would have taken 10 more minutes. How long did I run? If you like, if you like, if you want to try it yourself, if you want to give it a shot, do the problem yourself. After you have done it, then you can, re you can resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I are about to do together in a few seconds time. I'll give you about five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video and for you to be able to have the unobstructed view. So here we go. Do it yourself. Voila. Let's begin. So here's our solution. It's always a good idea, even if I forget to remind you, it's always a good idea to pause the video immediately after I have set it up, do it yourself and then compare your work against the work that we do together. You will, you will always get more out of it that way. So here is the scenario we are dealing with. We know, we are told, that altogether I walked 5 kilometers. So that we know. That part is given to us. We know that part of the distance, let's call it d kilometers, part of the distance, d kilometers, I walked. I walked, and let's call it, let's give it a time here, I walked for let's say t1 hours, we don't know how long I walked, we walked for t1 hour, t subscript 1, at what, what speed? At 2 kilometers per hour, at 2 kilometers per hour. The rest of the distance, if it's totally 5 kilometers, and if this is d kilometers, the rest must be 5 minus d kilometers. At this point I'm going to erase that 5, so that it doesn't confuse us, so that it's not in the way. It's gone. Now you understand where this 5 minus d is coming from, because the entire distance we are told is 5 kilometers, so if I walk part of the distance d kilometers, I walk d kilometers, then I must have run whatever is remaining from 5, which is 5 minus d kilometers. I ran for 4, let's call four t1 hours, let's call it t2 hours, at 3 kilometers per hour. That's the starting point, that's the beginning point. Now, what we know is that the amount of time it ended up taking me was 10 more minutes in, this, in the reverse scenario than it was in the original scenario. So the equation that we want to arrive at is to find the amount of time that it took us in the first scenario by adding up these two segments and then find the time it, will, it, will, it would have taken in, had I done the reverse scenario, had I walked the distance I ran and had I run the distance I walked, figure out the time for that scenario and then we set up the equation from the fact that it's 10 more minutes. That's all there is. In other words, in other words, we have to figure out four time segments. Here's T1, here's T2. Let's figure out what T1 is. T1 hours at 2 kilometers per hour, T1 hours at 2 kilometers per hour. So T1 hours that we're looking for, this T1 is expressed in terms of hours. Remember that has to equal to, has to equal to the distance that I walk, which is d kilometers, over the speed that I'm walking at, which is 2 kilometers per hour, 2 kilometers per hour. As you can see immediately, the, the kilometers, the unit of kilometers will drop out, the hours will end up on the top, and that's our t1. And it works out to be d over 2, d over 2 hours. t1 is d over 2, d over 2, 
hours. Similarly, now we can figure out the uh, T2. I, I, I think I called it D1. I meant to say T1. T is in town. T1, T with subscript 1. Similarly, T2, T is, T is in town. T2 would simply be, again, the same thing. The distance, which is 5 minus D, 5 minus D kilometers. And the speed that I'm going in this scenario is 3 kilometers per hour. One more time. One more time. The kilometers are going to drop out, and this hour will end up on the top, and it turns out that T2 is simply 5 minus D over 3 hours. Again, I keep reminding you that these time periods are expressed in hours. It is very important to pay attention to that because it will come in, that will play a major role in the final equation that we set up. This is D, this is 5 minus D, I'm going to rewrite it, 5 minus D, I don't like the way it looks. 5 minus d over 3. That's it. Now I'm going to pick up speed because the rest is very simple. We have done the hard part. The rest is down downhill. We need the room so we can erase the top part and now we're going to set up the reverse scenario. Now we're going to do the reverse scenario which is the time period that I... Uh, not the time period. Oh, that's very important. See, I, I almost mistake. Listen very carefully. It does not say had I, had I run the time that I walked and walked for the time period that I had ran that I had run rather. It doesn't say, it's not the time period that, uh, that, is, that is switched. It's not, it's not that the, for the amount of time that I was walking had I run for that time period and the amount of time that I was running had I walked for that time period I would have taken 10 more minutes. That's not what it says. It is not the amount of time that is constant in the two scenario but it is the amount of distance which believe it or not makes this problem simpler. There is a more complicated version we'll do I might as well tell you right now, the complicated version is going to be number 181. And in number 181, it will be basically the same exact problem, except it will say that it is the time period that is the same. Here it is the distance. You see, just a second ago, quite inadvertently, I ended up saying the time. It is not time, it's the distance. It's the distance is the same in both scenarios. Do you understand? What is remaining constant is the distance. So for the same amount of distance, from, from, for d kilometers, for d kilometers instead of walking, and for d kilometers instead of walking, we will run. And for 5 minus d kilometers instead of running, we'll walk. That will do upstairs, the reverse scenario. This video, I can tell right now, is going to end up being a very long video. And what is worse is that I had planned to do two problems in this video, so we'll see how it goes. So let's do D3. I'm going to pick up speed now. So this is a reverse scenario. The reverse scenario. In the reverse scenario, we, we're going to run. We ran for T3 hours, which is this part, the D, D, D kilometers, for T3 hours. So the distance is the same, D, D kilometers at, at 3 kilometers per hour. Because we are running. The running, running speed is 3 kilometers per hour. So before D kilometers we walked, now for the D kilometers we ran. So if we do that, this is what it works out to be. And that boils down to D over 3 hours. Just like before, no, no difference. It is D over 3 because it's the speed instead of being 2 kilometers per hour, it is 3 kilometers per hour. Similarly, we're going to walk. We're going to walk for, let's call it T4 hours. What's the distance we're going to walk? The distance that we're going to walk is the distance that we ran before in the first scenario. The distance that we ran in the first scenario was 5 minus d kilometers. It is the same distance that now, instead of running, we're going to walk. 5 minus d kilometers. At what speed are we walking? We are walking at 2 kilometers per hour. 2 kilometers per hour. Again, the units of kilometers are going to drop out. Then we end up with... 5 minus d over 2 hours. That's it. We are almost done. I need room again. So I need to raise the bottom part now. I'll give you a second in case you need to observe it. D3. 
the reason I give you two seconds to absorb the bottom part is because that's how long I need to absorb my tea. You understand? Let's do it. Next. So there you go. There is the final equation. The final equation is very straightforward. As you can see right here, T1 plus T2, T1 plus T2. Keep in mind that these are all hours is equal to T3 plus T4. Now what I want you to do is think for a second and tell me if this equation is valid. Of course this equation is not valid because what this equation it tells me is that the amount of time that I took for the entire journey is the same for both scenarios. It is not the same. We were told that in the second scenario, in the reverse scenario, when we are running, when we are running for the distance that we were walking and walking for the distance that we were running, we were told that in that scenario, we would end up taking 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. So this, this amount of time that you have here does not equal this amount of time. This amount represents 10 more minutes. This amount is this, this amount of time, this, this number of hours is 10 more minutes than T1 plus T2 hours. It's not the same. So how can we justify putting an equal sign there? Well, take away 10 more minutes. Take away 10 more minutes. This should say 10. I don't know if you can read it. It is 10 more minutes. This amount of time that you see there is the number of hours, but it is 10 more minutes then T1 plus T2 hours because we are told it will take 10 more minutes. So these two amounts are not the same but they will become the same if we take away 10 more minutes. Here we go. Voila. Now do you understand that why, what that is? 1 over 6? 1 over 6 because, because of the fact that this, this equation is expressed in hours, a sixth of an hour, 1 sixth of an hour is 10 minutes. This is where you have to pay attention. So we take away a sixth of an hour and now this is a well equation, we can pick up the speed now, the rest is really downhill, the rest really is a downhill, we just have to solve for, we just have to solve for the, the distance and once we have the distance we can figure out the rest. Let's pick up speed, okay? I keep saying it but I don't actually do it. So let's, let's begin. I'm not going to explain anymore, we're just going to keep on going. Oh, I shouldn't have raised the bloody thing before I, before I put down the T1 and T2. T1 was D over 2. T2 was 5 minus D over 3 which has to equal to T3 which was which is right here D over 3 plus 5 minus D over 2 5 minus D over 2 5 minus D over 2 minus 1 6 minus 1 6 that's it. We just have to solve for the distance. Once we know the distance, the initial part of the distance, the first segment of the journey, we can figure out the rest. As you can see here we have a denominator of 2, here we have a 3, 3, 2. We need to have a common denominator. The common denominator here would be 6. The common denominator would be 6 so that, so that, so that we can ignore, so that we don't have to worry about the denominator. If we make the denominator the same throughout the entire equation, then the denominator will cease to play any role and we can just concentrate on the numerator. So how do we make this denominator of 2 into a 6? Very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 3 over 3. 3 over 3 is just 1. We haven't changed anything. Here we have a denominator of 2. How do we make it a 6? Well, that's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 2 over 2. Same thing here. Take this quantity and multiply it by 2 over 2, which is just 1. Doesn't do anything. Same thing here. Multiply it by 3 over 3, and that will give you 3 times 2 is 6. Here we already have a 6. That's it. Let's, let's, let's keep going. So we have... We have 3 times d, which is 3d, plus 2 times, 2 times 5 minus d, right here, 2 times 5 minus d, has to equal 2d's, plus 3 times 5 minus 3, 3 times 5 minus d, minus a 1. Let's hope and pray to God that I haven't made a boo-boo. 3d plus 10 minus 2d equals 2d plus 15 minus 3d minus 1. 3d minus 2d is just a d, so we have d plus 10 equals 2d minus 3d is going to be minus d and 15, positive 15, negative 1 is going to give us positive 14. 
bring this D to the other side, so it's, it will become positive, minus D will become positive D, so we end up with 2D equals to 14 minus 10, which is 4, and therefore D is 2, 2 kilometers, voila. D equals 2, D equals 2, let's pick up from the top. Remember what the question was, the question, the question was how long did I run? So that's what we have to figure out now. So let's do it on the top. So here is what we're dealing with. The amount of distance was 5 kilometers. We just found out that the D is 2 kilometers. We just found out here. Which means the 5 minus D segment must be 3 kilometers. We walk the first segment. We walk the first segment at 2 kilometers per hour. That implies that implies, that implies that if we are walking, I have changed my mind, I'm not going to do a second problem in this video, this will be the end of it. If we are walking 2 kilometers, if we are walking at 2 kilometers at 2 kilometers per hour, it will take exactly 1 hour. Here, we ran, we ran at, how long did we, how fast did we run? Oh, isn't, isn't that nice? We ran at kilometers per hour well if you're running if you're running at the speed of three kilometers per hour and if you're going to run three kilometers that will also take an hour so told together it will take two hours but anyway as far as the problem is concerned we have answered the question the question was how long did i run i ran for one hour i ran for one hour the reason i continued with this thing here is because now we're going to verify our work make sure that the answer is correct make sure that answer that we're claiming we're claiming that we ran for one hour we're going to verify this down here. We're going to verify it by looking at the reverse scenario. By looking at the reverse scenario. The reverse scenario would be same exact thing. This part does not change, this is still D, which is 2 kilometers. This is still 5 minus D, which is still 3 kilometers. That part does not change, because it's the distance segments are the same in both scenarios. The, the, what changes is that instead of walking, we're going to run. We ran at 3 kilometers per hour. Well, if you're running at 3 kilometers per hour, and you're going only 2 kilometers, at 3 kilometers per hour tells me, 3 kilometers per hour tells me that I'm going to travel 3 kilometers in 1 hour. So you see how bright I am? Which means I'm going to travel 1 kilometer in 1 third of the hours, another kilometer in another third of the hours, and the remaining kilometer, third kilometer in the third, one third of the hours. Do you understand? In other words, to go 2 kilometers at 3 kilometers per hour will take 2 thirds of an hour. And here, we're going to walk three kilometers at two kilometers per hour but if you're going to travel three kilometers and you're only going two kilometers per hour two in one hour you're going to go two kilometers and another kilometer will take another half an hour so you're going to go hour and a half three thirds hour let's add them up three over two hours plus three over two over three hours plus three over two hours the common denominator is going to be six common denominator is going to be six so three times three is this 6 divided by 3 is 2, so that's going to become 4, plus 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so it's going to become 4 plus 9, which is 13, over 6 hours, but 13 over 6 hours is same as 12 over 6 hours, plus 1 over 6 hours, 12 over 6 hours is 2 hours, and 1 sixth of an hour. In other words, in this scenario, the amount of time that it's taking is 2 and 1 sixth of an hour. 2 and 1 sixth of the hour is taking 6 of an hour longer. It's taking 6 of an hour longer, a 6 of an hour, as we know, is 10 minutes. It's taking us 10 minutes longer in the reverse scenario, exactly the way it's supposed to be, exactly what is stated in the problem. That means our answer is correct. Why not?